Hello there, and welcome back to my YouTube channel, James here as ever, for today's ACCA Advanced Performance Management Review question of a Section B from the September and December 2021 past paper. Now, if this is the first time you've ever clicked on one of my videos, my name's James, I'm an ACCA qualified member from the UK, and on my channel, I help out ACCA students pass their upcoming exams. And if you've got the APM exam, that is one tricky test that you have coming up. So as ever, I always dedicate all my videos to my lovely subscribers, and today is no different. So as you can see above me at the bottom, Ryan, thank you very much, my friend, for your comment. And also, I've got to give a shout out to JP, whose test I've just actually marked on this question. So JP, you're helping yourself out, my friend, and other APM students around the world, because you've got me to do a little sweet recording for you. I'm also going to link this into the professional skills marks, which come into effect from September 2022 sitting. So that is going to be really, really key that for a Section B question, 25 marks, there's going to be a minimum of at least five professional marks embedded within the answer that you will be able to achieve. So in these answers, they don't actually highlight the professional marks because they weren't applicable back in 2021. However, I'm going to take you through them and see where they would be applied. So the question you need to have in front of you is uh, Sogolitaire, if I pronounce that right. Uh, I've put the link for that in the description below, along with the professional skills and all of the relevant texts that I would recommend that you purchase to buy and to actually pass this examination. But away from that, let's get stuck in to it now. So we're looking at section B on here. And if you come down to the first requirement, this is what we're looking at. And it's about the manufacturing decision in Canyard on there. So as you can see on the screen, this is what we're looking at. And we were asked in this question to advise the board how uh, escal issues may affect the decision to manufacture in Canyard. And then B was about advise the board on how EMA will help Sogolita in four areas identified. 10 marks, 15 marks. We weren't asked for any report format on here. So overall, you'd have 45 minutes to read the actual exhibits, produce your answer, and then move on to the next requirement on there. So within this video, I've done some lovely notes that I'd like to share with you how we should approach it. And also, before we get kicked off, I want to have a look through the actual mark scheme as well. That is where it's really going to add value for anyone who's doing this exam. And like we saw with Ryan's comment at the start, could be the difference in getting you up to that 50 plus. So within uh, question 2a, as we're looking at on here, we, we saw that we've got to talk about ethics and there are two key main buzz issue or buzzwords on here when we saw ethical issues. And this is where you'll see them underlined in the answer and you see them underlined here in the mark scheme where you've got to consider the impact of ethics on the strategy formulation and then also on the business performance. When we come on to part B, there are going to be marks for both calculating and applying figures. But then as you can see on here, highlighted in, in yellow, there are some key factors on there that for part A, you have to discuss the impact from a strategic and performance point of view. And then in part B, out of 15 marks, just over half of them are going to be, and you've got up to four marks, up to two, so you can't get away with just doing calculations for this. You've got to actually have a go on there. And I do apologize for misspelling calculations, but hey ho, let's move on. <laughs> and that's a very good point actually in my mind as to even spelling in the APM exam, the marker's not too fussed about that. They're more are interested about the content that you get down and actually showcasing those professional skills because communication is one of them. So let's head back to, first of all, when we actually look at these answers, and I'll scroll it back up on here if you want to take a, a photo or a screenshot, that you can see that on here we've got there's business performance, how they laid it out from the marker, and there is strategy formulation. And the first thing is that I know I'm going to get in the questions, or you'd be thinking about this going, James, how did they know, or how would I know, to write strategy formulation or actually link it to business performance? So having a look at the question analysis, it doesn't actually tell us in there. All it says is about, if I, as you can see from my little yellow arrow on there, about ethical issues and the decision to manufacture. 
But if you go back, and this is just one of those bits for exam technique that you've just got to get better at, have a look at uh, in the actual exhibits because for number two, the, the external examiner pointed out that we had details of a proposal on there, and that was for point two. And in number four, we had about business performance to improve it. So there were actual small triggers and then buzzwords relating to it. And if you go back down to uh, some of the actual exhibits, and again, I'll make it slightly bigger so you can see it on there. So in exhibit two, they talked about the wider strategy, first sentence on there. And then if you go down to exhibit four that we talked about, business performance was also highlighted in there. In part B, they mentioned about four areas. So you have to refer to, and we'll see in the answers for headings, this is where it links into. So that's enough going through the actual analysis on here. But the final one before we go on to the answer is that for the actual professional skills marks and the external examiner loves to see this, is that you apply back to the scenario. And in exhibit one, there are some real main key head, key points that they refer to quite a lot in the answer as to the main objective for this company is to maximize the long-term wealth of shareholders. We've got the largest shareholder is a pension fund on there, uh, which behave ethically. They only invest in companies which behave ethically towards their stakeholders. So these are statements that you need to start getting into your answer and referring back to the scenario. So coming on to part A now, and I'll just wind it back up here for a bit of a, a reminder. So we're being asked to advise the board on how ethical issues may affect the decision to manufacture in Kayland. So if you want to have a go at the question on here, you're going to get the answer analysis on the screen. And these are just some of the takeaways which I took, took uh, from going through it myself and how to pick up on the easy marks for your APM exam. So the first paragraph in this section B question and in part B as well is all about, first of all, defining what actually business ethics was and saying and communicating it in a professional manner that we're looking at the long-term sustainable competitive advantage of the business on them. Uh, this is what's expected by uh, society, um, but not codified in law. And this is where we've got, you've got to consider first, well, another key word to get down is stakeholders on here and how it may negatively impact on them from poor ethical behavior. So we've got some key words on the left-hand side there for you to get down. And this is the first one for the strategy formulation. So first things on here are all about application to the scenario. First thing on there, state the decisions if they are either ethical or unethical. So again, referring back to the scenario and those stakeholders. So we have that biggest shareholder. They've got the highest power. And if they thought the business wasn't operating ethically, then they could sell the shares on there. And that could have a negative impact on the future competitive advantage of Sogolitaire. Then on top of that as well, that if we actually had, and, and you could see on here, it would clearly be unethical to take action that would harm human behavior. So stating from the actual scenario that you've identified what the company's done and then linked it back to the requirement, the keyword on there as to the ethical practices and identified this was unethical on there. The key word on here from the actual answer um, analysis and the mark scheme was impact. So you've got to identify the ethical issue. And you can see on here, just to write these down and get these into your answer when you're writing them down and for future practice, you've got to be professionally sound to say, look, look what may cause harm, this could be, it could affect on there. And this is where you're looking at the worst case scenario and in the case of this, for the uh, diluting the WPA and the environmental regulations, saying what could happen to the business, i.e. if you're working for that company itself as a qualified accountant. And linking it to potential strategies on there, different stakeholders, and the other final key things is to just write down what if things could happen on here, all based on the scenario. Application back to the scenario and worst case, I would also say. Finally, they actually referred to the board of directors on there. So accountability and then who is at the bottom line responsible because we're looking to actually increase shareholder wealth. And then this is where we refer to the employees 
that they may want to work for a business with ethical strategies. Okay, brilliant stuff, but ethical strategies cost money. So you've got a cost benefit analysis that if costs go up, profits go down, and that is going to impact on the shareholders, i.e. the cost of ethical practices on there. So that quickly takes you through the strategy, uh, strategy formulation. So you could have got a maximum of six marks for that, but you can see it's there. Raise the point and then explain what could happen from it. And it's the same thing with business performance, where on here they were referring to, again, poor ethical behavior. Notice in the little bits um, highlighted above me in yellow. So it could do, it could also increase if people were, but then you've got to say, well, Poor ethical behavior would have a reputation damage on there. We've got to consider all of the business variables and what impacts on one another. So you've got from these factors of ethics being implemented, we've got the reputation on there. And we've also got environmental campaigners joining voices, forces with other stakeholder groups for a more larger sounding voice on there. And all these things I'd have down there resources of the organization so they've, i've highlighted costs we've got management of time and they also had fines penalties performance this is where the resources of the organization if they don't look after their ethical behavior correctly it could it could harm them in other factors on there and that is where we had poor ethical behavior could and if people were so linking back to performance, that it would have a positive or negative effect on performance. Because on here we've got behaving ethically can have a positive effect on business performance, for example, creating brand loyalty. Then finally, we had a couple of other points at the bottom. So ethical behavior, pricing and costing factors. So anything to do with performance, you've got to be thinking, right, what did we see in the scenario? And have a look back at the question yourself because they command premium prices, they're a trusted brand. So they could actually factor these costs in and still be a profitable organization. They're also asked to do CSR reporting, how they communicate, how they're operating. But again, linking back to stakeholders, the what if situations, and would it have a positive or negative impact from their ethical behavior and in which areas on there. So that nicely takes you takes us through part A. Notice how it's been formed as well. Make the point, back it up with the impact. Is it positive or negative? Coming on to the next part now, we were asked to actually advise the board on how EMA will help Sogolitaire in four areas identified. So link it back to the actual question now. And this is where you've got to be referring to those four key headings. You'll see it in the mark scheme, so make your life as easy as possible. So we've got to think about calculating costs, investment appraisal, setting performance measures and targets, and product pricing. All the details are in the description of the video, so you can read through the requirement yourself. But it's, again, all going to be about application back to the scenario. You can see on here we've got some certain figures about if we go through different options. There are also triggers on there where investment appraisal comes up. So when you're going through the question, identify areas and do yourself a favor on here. It's tricky enough when you've got to break down everything, but we've got to come to a decision on this toxic waste product, how it's being put into practice on there. So as we look on the actual question again, and notice for the first mark to get it in the bag, it's all about there understanding and stating the basics. So the environmental management accounting is all about the production and, and analysis of financial and non-financial. So covering all bases here, uh, identifying the uh, environmental and related cost, managing its performance. So head back to that requirement on there. So advise the board on how EMA will help Sogolitaire in four um, areas identified. So we started off with EMA there straight off the bat. Then you can see underlined, we're getting straight into those four headings, but you've got to be detailed in what you're talking about in order to get the mark. So it's 15 marks, we've got four different headings. So it's gonna be three to four marks. As you saw in the actual mark scheme, you've got sort of up to four in calculations in one area and up to two in another. So give the marker a decision to say, have they answered potentially 15 marks worth on here? And by starting off with the four headings, 
you're going to be on to a winner. So as you can see on the screen again, coming down the left-hand side now, so for calculating costs, we've gone with compliance, uh, the costing, and considering all factors about costing on there, different techniques, analysis, and finally with anything that you're going to whether it be your own personal life, or in this case from the business perspective, there's going to be a cost-benefit analysis of what you are doing. So you can see on here from a compliance point of view that they need to measure the environmental related costs. But on top of that, you've got to think as of the wider picture as an accountant to say, well, are there any hidden costs, any reputation or relation costs, uh, direct or indirect? Have we accounted for all of them? because different techniques measure those costs in different ways. So arc back to your PM and your management accounting knowledge now that you've got activity-based uh, costing, input and output analysis, life, uh, life cycle costing on there. So use all your knowledge, apply it to the scenario, and then state to say, well, what are the impacts on this? That would it increase the cost or decrease the cost, how we calculate it? Finally, they were talking about investing. So investing is, is pump, pumping money into that information system. So these are potential hidden costs with overheads that need to be compared with the benefits. There's got to be a balance there. Coming on to investment appraisal now. So were there actually any amounts that were actually excluded within, within any of this? So did we overcompensate or undercompensate? Do not include all of the relevant costs such as? so. Um, it, that, they're talking about investment appraisals on there. So look back at the requirement to see what was included and what was not, because they stated up at the top there that to manufacture chemical K, so again, referring back to the scenario, either Jayland or Kayland did not include estimates for the present values on there of the decommissioning of the plant or the cleaning. So again, direct referring back to that scenario, because if the project were to take place, would it increase or decrease MPV? So that is where we talked about costing before. Was it going to go up or down? And in this case, now talking about MPV going up or down again. We've got specific figures on here. Again, we'll come on to the workings below, but it's all about the impact to MPV. Think of the logistics about how it's going to be put into practice. So picture what's going on in the scenario, what costs are involved, picture the different uh, actual countries on there. And the other key thing on here, which get it down in your notes, applying your own figures. Even if you have different figures to what we're going to be looking through on the workings, if you apply yours correctly, discuss it, and then also consider the impact to the scenario, you will still gain the own figure marks on there. The next heading we had was setting performance measures and targets. And again, applying examples, impact on different stakeholder groups, and consider all of the different variables and factors. So we'll just start off with the first paragraph on there. So they have, for example, by reducing the environmental related costs. And this is where uh, its environmental performance is clear to a range of stakeholders who may have an interest in those matters. OK, so simply stating an example from the actual scenario and linking it into costs, fines, uh, taxes they had on there, anything that could be measured or set a target to use the words in the titles to guide your answer so that this is a key phrase you must always bear in mind that you're answering the requirement that was set by the marker and not just answering an uh, answering an answer that you want to just write down because you think oh the more words i put down the more marks i've got uh, potentially of getting well i'm afraid if you if you talk about something that isn't referring to the requirement that is going to get a big fat zero, I'm afraid. And other variables and factors that you need to consider in the APM exam, get these written down in your notes, financial, non-financial, internal, external, short term, long term on there. That will definitely come up in one form or another in your examination. And you've just got to have these thoughts on your mind that you've considered all those different variables and factors, applying it back to the scenario. Finally, coming on to the product pricing now. So again, think in your head, product pricing. So if I've got a product and it starts off from day one when we're thinking about releasing this product all the way to the final day when we take it off the shelves and it no longer is, is viable, 
Well, that's the product life cycle, that it's going to have different pricing and different costs. And this is where the balance between profit and operations comes into it, that the market is looking for you to say, look, to act ethically responsible, then, but also to balance that the shareholders want to return, we've got to manage those costs effectively, operate correctly on there, and then also look for an acceptable profit. Refer back to the, that key shareholder that wants to maximize shareholder wealth. And this will also, in turn, improve the long-term financial performance of the organization. Finally, we've got to consider, again, the wider variables. So what don't we have control of? So inflation was one of the factors. The cost of capital may change. Regulations in different countries may alter. So these are the things we have to factor in in our strategic decisions. And then finally, the price on here. The bottom line is to, if we go through with this, are we going to make any money on here? And we're already told within the requirement that we command a premium price. And hence, that is where I think we could actually absorb the extra costs if we were to go through one option over the other. So the cleaning costs of Kaland are ex uh, estimated to be 50% higher than Jayland on there. So the MPV, we've got two different ones on there. Uh, and then we've also got to factor in those uh, uh, de decommissioning and cleaning costs. So it links into you've got two different options. Remember, we have estimations here on the MPV. So you could consider about reliability. Uh, how did we actually come to those figures? Uh, the more into the future those figures relate to, uh, how, how, um, how much reliance can we put on them? All these different things uh, are factors that you could consider. But that nicely takes you through. And I'll leave the notes on the screen. So if you want to get any others jotted down, uh, the full answer of you, but I did touch on at the start of the actual uh, recording about the professional skills marks on this. And again, I've put the link in the description below so that you can access this. So for your part B in your APM exam, there are four key areas of professional skills that you will be tested on. Communication, analysis and evaluation, skepticism and commercial acumen. And this is where I'm just going to give you a small little overview whilst we have it on the screen here that for communication, I would say there'd be definitely a mark or two here as to how you actually uh, simplify your arguments, link it back to the requirement and say, especially from an ethical point of view, are they in a better or worse situation? You heard me talking uh, very skeptically as to, you know, we've got two different countries here. How do we know if this is going to work? Uh, and the figures are robust that we can rely upon. So question what is actually happening in the requirement. You are not going to get marked down for, and I'm going to use the words on here, exploring the different variables or challenging the status quo. So within your APM exam, in every single uh, actual requirement and scenario, think to yourself, what doesn't look right here? Or if this came up in my workplace, what would I raise to my manager? Uh, commercial acumen, so this is all about considering those wider variables and again they'd be embedded within this part beyond here so like we talked about financial, non-financial, internal, external, short term, long term, these are key issues and judgments that you need to show your insight to and again apply it back to the scenario. And finally analysis and evaluation is pretty much throughout because we've been considering all of those actual impacts, what could happen, application here again back to the scenario uh, but this is where you're doing your due diligence and thinking to yourself practically what is going on in this type of product or service that we're actually um, having within this scenario on there but those are the things those are the four key areas for the professional skills that will be awarded embedded into your answer that you need to be referring to as if you were in a working scenario so I'll put the document in the description of the video below, guys, so you can have a little read of it in a bit more detail, but it's very, very helpful and very, very important on there for you. But overall, that nicely takes us through, and hopefully you had it done in 45 minutes in time, uh, a full 25 mark question, answer analysis, linking back to professional skills. And if you follow these tips, I think it is definitely going to help you out for your APM exam. So I hope you've enjoyed the video. If you have, give it a massive like and thumbs up below. I really appreciate all the support for the channel. 
Let me know in the comments if you've got any questions, what you thought of the video. I don't sort of do these very often, to be honest with you. So JP, I'm thanking you for that, and I hope the tips help Ryan to get you over the line on there, my friend. So if you want access to all my free videos, just hit the subscribe button below and put the bell on so that you get notified for everything. And let me know how you get on in your APM exam. I love to hear from people who watch the videos, and I hope it helps because just following these things through, picking up on the tips, it could be that difference in, you know, when you get your phone, you're like, oh my gosh, is it going to, oh no, it better not be a 48, a 49. And then you see a 50 plus, and that is what I hope the video has done for you today. So on that bombshell, we'll see you next time. Cheers.